Are you having trouble with audience segments? Well, so did I at one point, and so do a whole bunch of other people online. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through everything about audience segments, how to understand them. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step. Step. It's gonna be a complete guide on this. And then I'm gonna show you how to best utilize them for your campaign so you can have a competitive advantage. Now, without further ado, let's get into it and discuss audience settings inside of Google Ads. Now, the first thing you wanna do is come over here to your Google Ads campaign. And what you'll find is a whole bunch of settings on the left. Google has gone with a completely new design and I'm not a big fan of it, but if you want to use the old design, you can come back here and use previous design. I'm pretty sure that is going the way in the near future. So you might want to get accustomed to the new design. What we're going to do is come over here to audience keywords and content. We're going to come down here to audiences. And then as you'll see here, there's a whole bunch of stuff. If you have a campaign, you're gonna see a whole bunch of clicks going, provided it's active and running. Uh, and essentially Google is allowing you to see where the clicks are coming from, which segments people are actually coming from when it comes to uh, clicking on your ads, going to your landing pages, so on and so forth. And for this, if we wanna see our actual audience segments, all we have to do is click on show table. And as you will see, we have all the different types of audience segments and all the different campaigns. And it's pretty nice. You can also change this to campaign view. Uh, if you wanna just see the actual campaign, you wanna look at the account view, you absolutely can. And it essentially can just divide it up at whatever level you want. Kind of nice. I like the ad group view, it's kind of nice. And it gives you a nice overview of what you're currently uh, bidding on inside of your account. Of course, it's different for everyone. With regards to actually changing and finding new audience segments, pretty easy. All we have to do is come over here to edit audience segments, click on this, and then select either campaign or ad group. I would highly recommend selecting the campaign level. The reason for that is it is very easy to manage at the campaign level. If you start doing this at an ad group level, it becomes more and more difficult as you have to micromanage every single ad group. And for most people, a giant waste of time. Now, if you're a super advanced advertiser, you can do whatever you want. Uh, for most people, campaign is completely fine. So we click on campaign, and then we're gonna come over here and look at the different campaigns we actually want to look at the audiences for. For this one, we're just gonna do HVAC campaign, click on that. And now you're gonna be prompted with two options, targeting and observation mode. These two things are very important. Targeting is very, very simple to understand. When you put this into targeting mode, you will only target the actual audiences you have selected. So if I hit pools and spas and then I flip it over to targeting mode, we are only gonna target people in pools and spas. Now that might sound like a fantastic idea. The issue is we don't know how many people are in this audience segment. The reason being is Google is kind of iffy with the actual uh, impressions and everything uh, around that. That being said, what I see a lot of people do is they'll set it to targeting. There's not enough people in the audience. They'll get no clicks and then they'll get upset and never use Google ads again. That's not where we want to be. For most accounts, you're completely fine in observation mode. Um, if you want to test targeting later in the campaign lifecycle, that's completely fine. But normally, if you're starting a search campaign, leave it in observation mode. In observation mode, all it's going to do is collect the data and then make you can make decisions later on or you can put it into a smart bidding strategy, which I recommend after you collect about 20 to 30 conversions and Google will automatically optimize for these audience segments. You don't gotta do anything with them, which is really, really nice. When it comes to actual audience segments and picking them, there are so many audience segments here. We have detailed demographics. So this runs through essentially everything that is very specific about the person, whether it's their marital status, their education, home ownership, employment, really depends on what product you're selling. If you're selling to single, fathers or you know married mothers or whatever it is you can adjust your campaign for this uh, i would definitely look at observing these audience segments beforehand instead of just going yep that's the only people we want to target because again you don't know how many people are in the audience per se and you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot and go oh well that audience segment actually doesn't convert as well as i thought it would very very useful specifically if you're going after a certain type of people uh, or a certain age or whatever it is Affinity, so what is their actual interest and habits? This is something that is really, really nice because Google will figure out what type of interest these people have. And normally if you're selling some sort of product that maybe there's a hobby around, this is a great audience segment to go after. So if people really like, I don't know, Frisbees, you might be able to find outdoor you know, entertainment, which could be, well, let's see if we can find anything here. Outdoor enthusiasts, which might be a great audience segment to target. There's also a whole bunch of other ones. When it comes to actually selecting, uh, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, a lot of people will put so much time into this. I normally go through all this entire list and 
find anything that's slightly relevant and just add it. So if I'm doing a pool installation campaign, I look for people who like the outdoors, um, they want, are interested in pools for in-market segment, which is generally researching or planning to buy something or have previously bought something that indicates to Google that they're in the market for your product or service. So maybe they bought pool noodles for their backyard or something like that and they're doing pool installation. Or maybe they purchase an accounting software and they're looking for an accountant that might be in you know business and industrial products. I, I don't know. You can, you can look through here because there's quite a bit. And then once you see stuff you like, you can just add them and go from there. In market, of course, uh, very, very simple. People in the market to buy what you have to offer. Coming back, we then have your data segments, which is things that you can add. So if you have a list of people who visit your website, if you have an email list, you can create a lookalike audience. So Google will essentially take all that information and then try to find people online that look like them. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do here. And it's really nice. You can see all converters, all visitors, and really maybe someone got a lead magnet from you. So they entered in their information online, you gave them a free guide, free ebook, free checklist, whatever it is. You could then remarket to those people and see how they do in relation to the actual clicks, conversions, and all of that stuff. Combined audience segments, this is pretty interesting. We don't use this all that often, but essentially you're combining audience segments from different perspectives. So maybe you wanted to create an audience segment that is 20 to 40 year old males who love the outdoors and who have visited our websites. That's something you could do in the combined audience segment. And essentially you're just going to add in, add a certain specific segment and then add, 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 and then you can create a new segment all of your own. So uh, they're all in that specific one. Now, why you would personally do that? I'm not exactly sure. Every company is different. Sometimes your situation may warrant doing a combined audience segment, but like I said, we don't use them all that often. Now, once you're happy with all of this, you can come down here to save and this will save in observation mode. Like I said, please don't run this in targeting mode for 99% of people. It will waste your money or you won't get any results whatsoever. So that's also another thing. Another audience segment here is demographics. So this is something that is very important. Age, gender, and household income will determine a lot. Are these individuals uh, more wealthy or less wealthy? Are these people old or young? Are these people male, female, or unknown? It really depends on what you're selling. And what I would do here is Again, leave it in observation mode for a while. For this one, you have to add it at the ad group level. I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it, but you can click on the actual ad group here. And as you can see, you can check them off if you like them and uncheck them if you don't like them. So say we only wanna target 18 to 34 year old females, we can uncheck all of this. You might wanna leave unknown here. Sometimes Google doesn't have all the data and that could be a large percentage of people. And we wanna target the lower 50% of income and we'll leave unknown here. Of course, you can uncheck unknown if you want, and we're only gonna go after females. Um, and then we just hit save demographic, and that will set it to only go after those people. Be very, very aware of what you're doing here. Um, normally, I don't like to touch audience segments at the beginning. I like to gather as much data as possible, and then in month two and three, then we can make adjustments from there. Normally, again, if you're running smart bidding, target CPA, maximize clicks, anything of that matter, uh, Google's gonna optimize all this stuff for you if you're getting enough data, so it shouldn't be a big deal provided you're getting enough data. If you're not, of course, you can come in here and manually edit these things, which is kind of cool. You can come in here and uh, check this off and then we can hit edit and we can change the actual bid adjustment. So maybe we wanna increase a certain audience segment by five or 10%. Normally not gonna have to do this for most things. Again, smart bidding is really becoming an awesome feature and really allows you to just manage it at a high level as opposed to managing it at the nitty gritty level. Uh, bid adjustment 10%. In case, again, if you see something, maybe the AI is just not performing well and you wanna do it manually, you absolutely can. Uh, or you're just not getting enough data. The final thing here, if we come down to exclusions, maybe there is a certain audience we do not want to target. Maybe it is a certain specific campaign and we do not want to target real estate for whatever reason. We can add that and we will no longer target real estate. Very, very simple to do. Again, most people assume that just because someone's in an audience, that there's no way they're gonna convert. Google's not perfect when it comes to all this information. So I highly recommend gathering a whole bunch of information first, going through the data. What you would do is literally come over here and we'll just close that for a second so it's easy to see. Look through all of this, look at clicks, look at impressions, click through rate, average cost per click, conversion rate, cost per conversion. And then you'll start to see trends like, okay, maybe swimming enthusiast converts a lot better, lower cost per conversion than life and outdoors. Maybe we can add a negative bit adjustment to that. Normally, SmartBenny is gonna do that for you anyways. Uh, but again, 
nice thing to have in reserve in case it's not. Now, one thing you definitely wanna do is continue optimizing this campaign, whether it's audience segments, keywords, whatever it is, you should probably get some sort of a checklist to do that so you can actually update the account and optimize it and see the best results possible. What we have is a free Google Ads optimization checklist. Again, completely free and it walks you through what to do on a weekly, monthly, and three month basis. It also allows you to jot down your results so you know what you're doing month over month to make sure you're improving and getting better results, seeing more profit, more sales, and having a better account. So if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave a comment down below. I will do my best to get back to you. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day. Take care, and I wish you all well.